before we get into facial sliders, I want to do a little bit of a uh, kind of a demonstration on how these things actually work. Now, relationships in, in Animation Master um, are basically drivers where they are driving certain properties that you set. So if I set, if I have a relationship that drives bone movement, the slider will drive the bone movement. If, it, if I have a slider that drives vertex point animation uh, or control point animation, it will drive those vertices or those control points. Um, in Hash, it's really cool because you can actually have it do both. So what I'm going to do here is I want to show you how to do this really quick. Now, I've just created a really uh, crude model, um, lathed this spline right here, and I've gone into bone mode and I've added a few bones in here. And it doesn't matter, but um, what I can do is in my model, I can say new pose percentage, and it takes me into this relationship here. Now, I usually like to have my timeline up because I can then see right here what my pose, what percentage my pose is at. Now, a pose, a slider pose actually has 100 percent um, to 0 percent, which means that you can actually have 100 frames of animation in here. You can also change it so that it is, it takes up, um, if I go to my user properties, I can right click on it, say settings, Okay, and then in my minimum, I can change it to negative 100. That way, uh, my slider goes from negative 100 to 0, or to 0, and then back to 100. So if I look at my timeline here, now it goes from negative 100 to 0 to 100. Now I have 200 frames of animation that I can do in here. It's really nice. It's a lot better than a blend shape because blend shapes um, have one, maybe two, or one, maybe two extra keys that you can set. Usually in a blend shape, you have A and you have B. And you can, sometimes you can do C, uh, depending on the package that you're in. But in, uh, in Hash, you have 200 frames of animation that you can deal with here. So all you do to create a new, um, a new pose or a new slider is you go to where you want on the slider at negative 100 and say at negative 100, I want this cup to look like this. So that's all I do. When I go to 100%, I want it to go the other way. So I'm going to bend it over this way. Okay. So now on my slider, you'll notice it goes negative 100 to 100, and it goes back and forth. The nice thing is, is that say at um, negative 50, I actually want it straight out, and then at 50. I want it straight out again. Okay, it's keying these the whole time. So now it straightens out, straightens out, goes back. Okay, so that's easy enough. You can drive any bone data with a relationship. You can you can create these properties in these sliders, and you can drive any sort of uh, property that you would like to do with that. Um, in addition to that, say if I scroll down to negative 100. If I go into muscle mode, I can then tweak um, control vertices. And you can see when I do that, they change blue. That means at that point in the animation, there is a keyframe set on them. So I can actually grab this and kind of sculpt it to where I want. This is how you can um, fix problems in animations if you have an, an animation where some somebody's doing something or a character's doing something and you want to adjust the animation, you can actually animate points. But in this, you're animating it on a slider. So say I move it there and then, uh, you know, at right here I want to shrink this down and move it out like this. And I can do whatever I want to it. But then I go back to my slider and at 100%, say I want to grab all these and I want to move them out here and I want to grab these and I want to move them down here, kind of sculpt this out a little bit, and then grab these, maybe scale them out, and pull them out like this. Okay, so now if I go back to my slider, not only are the bones being driven, but the point data is being driven too. So I have this slider where I have 200 frames of animation that I can set on this at any given time. So I can go here and say, well, right here, right about 50, I actually want these, these points here, to 
go up here, and I want these ones to scale down and get pulled in like this. So now I go to my slider. see how that's working. So it's really nice to work with these sliders and doing facial animation is beautiful because when you go to set up a face uh, you can put bones in to drive generic parts like the jaw opening up like we have and then you can sculpt the rest in a blend shape um, in a property itself. So what I've done is I've actually gone in and uh, created a bunch of these um, in my, in my uh, will model. So I want to show you that. So I'm going to actually get rid of this model and I'm going to load in my new will model that has all these. So if I go into my user properties you can say, see now I have facial poses. I added a new folder called facial poses and in there I added a folder called phonemes and then I have a bunch of sliders within the phonemes. Now I'll show you what's going on here. I'm going to edit this relationship. In this relationship, you'll see there's a bones folder and a splines folder, and that's because it's driving both the bones and the splines. So if I go to my side view here, I have to I want to show my facial bones so you can see it. Okay. So, like I said, my bone the bones look all black and they don't draw right because my new video card it has a hash has a problem with it res it down a little bit so it's faster, but um, you can see what I did here is I dropped the jawbone, okay, I have teeth bones, one's for the bottom teeth and one's for the top teeth, and then I have those tongue bones that go right along the tongue, okay. So what I have here is if I look in here, uh, the only bone that I've moved was the jaw, and the jaw I just rotated down, um, and that was at 100%, at 0% it's just my default position. At 100%, I move the jaw down. Now if I go into muscle mode, you'll notice, well, they're not showing up very well here. There we go. You'll notice that I have data on a few of the control vertices. So at zero there's data, and then it goes to 100 and there's data. And all I did was sculpt those using the mirror mode so I could sculpt one side of the face and it would mirror to the other and I used the magnet tool just pulling them out and making sure that they were evenly distributed. So you can see now with that slider he says ah and I also did it down here in the chin so as I get as I get bigger see how the jaw kind of collapses and that corrects the deformation so that um, I don't have to have bones driving that Okay, so in this slider, I'm driving both bones and control points. And Hash is wonderful for being able to do this. All right, so that created that uh, phoneme. I'm just going to close it, but you can see I went through and I did A, E, O, right here, U, F and V, M, P, B. So that's these are all the sounds that you need to do lip sync. L, K, S, T, T, H, and an open mouth where it just drops the jaw a bit. So I can have one of these going and drop the jaw. Now I also went through and I did eye animations, and let me show you how I did those. Um, in this eyebrows up down, or down up, however you want to say it, I'm going to go into muscle mode, and you'll see what I did is I made it 200, or I made the settings negative 100 to 100, so that I had down and up. Now at 100%, it's up and you can see how there is keyframe data on all those at 100%. If I go down, you'll see that there's keyframe data there too. Okay, and nothing in the middle, but they go back and forth. And all I did was I scrolled to here, went to 100%, I sculpted it how I wanted to with mirror mode and magnet tool, and then I went back, sculpted it how I wanted, now, when you're using the magnet tool, one thing you have to be aware of is I've got these eyes here, and I've got like teeth in the mouth, um, a tongue in the mouth, things like that that I don't want to move. So what I'm what I do is I go back to my model, and I select the face, piece of the face, and hit the forward slash key to multi-select or to select connected, and then I hit the lock. 
what that does is it allows me to sculpt the face without without messing up the eyes or the teeth or the tongue or anything like that. So I go back to my relationship and you can see how they are uh, they're blocked or they're locked. So now you can see how that how that works. So now I can sculpt whatever I want without dealing with um, moving the eyes or anything. So that's all I did for those. I'm going to close that relationship. And what I did is I took the eyebrows down up and I copied all that information, making sure that my muscle, key muscle button was down. I just clicked in the window. In fact, I'll just show you how to do this. I'm going to say new property, percentage. I'm going to open up this one. I'm going to edit that. And then I'm going to edit this one. I say new relationship. Okay, so now here, if I go into muscle mode and I scroll to 100%, let me first of all, I'm going to change the settings on this one to negative 100. Hit OK. So now, if I'm in this mode, at 100%, I want, I'm going to go into muscle mode here. I want to copy from this one to this one. So I go here, and at 100%, you can see all this data. And I'm just going to make sure that my muscle is or key muscle selected. I'm going to click in here, I'm going to hit copy, go to here, hit paste, and it did it. It did it. Go back here, scroll to negative 100, click in here, copy, go to the other one, scroll to negative 100, click on it, paste. Now the way that I created left and right is all I did was I did exactly what I just did, except if I want to keep this one or the left side doing it but not have the right, um, I'm going to go to where that keyframe is, going to select the control points, and I'm going to hit delete key. Okay, um, And then I'm going to scroll up to 100%, select those same control points, and hit delete key. So now what I've got is just the information on this side, so I can scroll back and forth and it only does one eyebrow. And that's how I did eyebrow left up down or down up and eyebrow right down up. Now I did the same thing with the eyelids. In, cl in eyelids close open I used the bones and sculpted it so that the eyelids would close down or they would open up on the slider. And then what I did is I copied that information, pasted it into four new ones, but in f the four new ones I deleted everything I didn't need so I just had the left bottom the right bottom, the left top, and the right top, and that way I can control them independently. So I'm actually just going to delete this, and that's how I created all of those. Now, in the expressions, um, in this frown smile, I'll show you here, where I edit relationship, I'm actually going to right click in here and show my pose sliders and drag this over here so you can see it better. In my facial poses, you'll notice that the frown smile is driving not only bone data and vertex data or control point data, but it's also driving two other sliders. So in my frown smile, it's driving those other sliders in addition to driving bones. So if I look under here, I've got splines and user properties. So I'm driving the eyelid left bottom user property and the eyelid right bottom user property just with this slider in addition to if I go into muscle mode here muscle data so I'm keying all of that but this one slider is driving all of that so you can create all kinds of expressions you can create combinations of sliders you can create anything you want and it's very very handy um, so that's how I went through and I created the facial sliders. Um, and so these are the sounds that are most common uh, that we use all the time. And um, that's about what I have. Most of the time I'll have a little bit more for the tongue and for um, other things, but I found that for this model, this is about all I need to do facial expressions. So that's about it for facial expressions. And then I went through and I saved my model as Will Rig 12. And that was it.